What's going on guys? Welcome back to the after credit scene. We are talking forecast and predictions for episode six, the finale of Loki season two. Now, before we get into this, please like and subscribe to the channel. We are well on our way to 200 subscribers, but we need your help to get there. Hit the notification bell so when we drop new content, you'll be the first one to know about it. Then share this sucker all across the multiverse. Now, there's a whole lot of theories. There's a whole lot of talk on the internet, so let's get right to it. Loki, god of stories here. Um, there, there's been a whole lot of talk about Loki becoming the god of stories. I, I tend to believe it. Um, I think a lot of the dialogue and the things about write your own story, do it your own way, all of those things are definitely leaning towards that storyline uh, and that type of character that he goes from being the god of mischief and someone that creates chaos to being not necessarily a god of order, but somebody in charge of his own story. It reframes the same character. However, I do not think that there's enough time in this last episode to go into a lot of the backstory of how he becomes that the way he does in the comics. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and start saying here to lower your bar, right? Um, because a lot of this story is going to be great, but I think it's only going to be the beginning um, of, of a much larger story that if they choose to tell it, uh, could get really crazy. And there's just not enough time in this, in this hour or 45 minutes or however long it's going to be to really dive into that in a way that's going to be satisfactory. I think it's the beginning of this. And that's how the, that's how the, the episode is going to end. It's going to wrap up this multiverse story with an explanation of a, 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 where it coincides with, with Loki understanding a little more about himself. Um, there's quite a few images of how uh, that we have not seen yet in the show that were in the trailers could be misdirection. Uh, could be extra things that they shot to throw us off, uh, but we'll talk about those here as we get towards the end. However, one of those things that I'm 100% sure is coming is, is some images of Ravonna Renslayer, which looks like she's at the end of time near where Eliath uh, would be. Um, I, I think we're going to get some more of her story. I think maybe we get some images of what the explosion and what all of the stuff that Loki's doing looks like from the end of time, from her perspective, because we've seen it from the TVA, but we haven't seen it from the end of time. And that's where, uh, with Elioth and He Who Remains, that's where a lot of the uh, TVA and the and the sacred timeline stuff, that's one of those creations of He Who Remains. And it's going to be interesting to see what that looks like as Loki does his thing here. I think we're probably going to get some of that from her perspective um, and see what that story looks like and how she plays into what's going on. She's got an interesting perspective because she was there, memories or not, whenever the TVA was created uh, by He Who Remains. Um, there's a whole lot of story there uh, that I think has to be told if for no other reason from a different perspective to wrap this whole thing up. Here's another place where I'm 100% certain uh, that something's going to happen, and it has to do with all of the conversations about Ouroboros, about the snake eating its own tail. You know, we got we got Victor Timely and and Ob talking to each other about. Well, I was uh, I, I took my inspiration from from Victor Timely, and Timely says I took my inspiration from this guy named Ob. There's a loop there, but it doesn't have a beginning or an end. Um, I think the image of a snake eating its own tail is a much better image because there is a start. Okay, um, to say that it always it's not the grandfather paradox thing where it's like. You know, if, like it is with Marty McFly, that if if his parents didn't meet, then he doesn't exist and all those kind of things. I think Endgame threw that story and that type of story away, that once things happen, they've happened. You can go back and visit them. You can go back and interact with them. But all it does, as far as the multiverse is concerned, is create another branch. It does not change what will happen when you jump back to your sacred timeline. The only exception is the things that happened in episode one with the TVA and that does not break the end game rules because it happened at the TVA, which is outside of time and does not abide by the normal rules of time. It's not a multiverse. Everything is happening at the same time. It's why the clocks don't move. It's why people don't age. All of those kind of things. So I think we're going to get, you know, we got the beginning of, of Victor Timely, a.k.a. He Who Remains storyline there uh, when Renslayer delivers the TVA handbook uh, along with Miss Minutes to Victor Timely in 1863. Uh, but we hadn't gotten uh, OBs yet. We get that in episode five when OB 
who we find out's real name is A.D. Doug, meets with Loki, meets with Loki, and Loki says, "Well, can you build a tin pad?" And he says, uh, and this is an important part. He says, "If something like if I had a, if had enough time, that would take decades." Um, the the idea there is that if Loki hasn't doesn't intervene, it still happens. Okay, uh, A.D. Doug uh, starts creating this technology. Somebody finds him somewhere, whether it's whether it's the technology that exists and, and a Kang variant finds him or somebody else finds him or he creates the TVA on his own. Uh, however, that happens. Um, it happens without Loki. It happens without Kang. There's a path there where it happens. Um, however, Loki handing him the TVA handbook just sped up the process, uh, a handbook that he wrote a handbook that contains his own ideas, you know, which came first, you know, the, the book that he wrote later based on his ideas, or did he get the ideas from the book? I don't think when it comes to the guy that created the idea, it really matters that much, especially if you're just talking about speeding up the process. And I really think that conversation was key. That's where the whole snake eating its own tail, where the beginning of the loop occurs. OB could have created the TVA with his own abilities and his own knowledge, and then timely or uh, the TVA gets created and all these different things happen. Renslayer gets a hold of the book, gives it to Timely so that it starts happening again. Or Loki comes back and hands it to OB or AD Doug, who gets it 10 years, 20 years, 30 years ahead of time. It doesn't really matter there. I just want you to realize that there is a starting point to some of these things, even though there's a loop. You have to start it. You have to be present in that moment. And I think that's part of what they were getting at because Loki knows that. I've got to be present in these moments. I've got to be at this place or doing this thing because it is integral to the story that I'm trying to tell. Those things matter. Those things matter back in Endgame, the conversation with the Ancient One and Bruce Banner. They have that conversation uh, in Endgame. And so th there's, there's a point where things start and things end, things branch off and all that kind of stuff. So it's just a matter of, are you part of the branch and are you inside the branch or are you outside the tree jumping from branch to branch? It's just a matter of perspective. So uh, I think we're still gonna get some of this loopy stuff. I think the whole episode, the whole season has to have this snake eating its own tail thing. And I don't think it's gonna be a season two wrap up. I think it's gonna be a season one wrap up and it's all gonna kind of come together to tell this story where Loki ends up back in the, in the Marvel movies somehow. Um, having said that, I don't think this happens without a sacrifice. Now I've got Mobius up here because whether, whether he dies and then he gets seen again, or whether this is Mobius making some kind of sacrifice where Loki has to sacrifice these friendships for all of this to work correctly. Um, he gets to tell his own stories, but at what cost, right? Um, does he get to have his friends? Um, th this idea that you can't have power and relationships was kind of teased with Sylvie. It was teased with he who remains and Renslayer. He wipes her memories. I think some of this stuff's gonna repeat itself and Loki may have to be the one that wipes their memories or they have to be the ones to say, hey, wipe our memories to make this happen so we can be here to do these things. I think th this whole thing doesn't happen without some kind of sacrifice uh, to where the, the loom or all these things kind of start working again. Now we're gonna jump here. This is still not gonna end well. The loom cannot exist. It can't. Um, and if it does, they're going to have to really do some explaining and jump through some hoops because the multiverse does not exist when the loom exists. And all of this stuff has to happen in order for the multiverse to break wide open and for things to happen the way they're going to happen. Now, maybe you find out Loki's behind all this and he's controlling all this. There's a shot from the, from the episode six trailer where you see all the timeline branches turn green. Now, is that a one-time thing? Is that a continual thing? Is that some? Is that Loki being able to kind of control this somehow, where it, it's able to be controlled, fixed, held, held in place? Who knows? Um, but him being able to be a part of his friends' stories and see them without them knowing who he is um, seems like an appropriate place for him. He hasn't had to make a sacrifice, and I think in order to go from being the god of mischief and chaos to being the God of stories and order, he's going to have to make some kind of sacrifice to throw him into, um, to throw him back into 
hero territory. Um, and, and so I, I think that's that's got to happen. All this to say, you're going to have to lower your bar. There's a lot of expectations, especially with these storylines. There's a lot of things going on here that just aren't going to come to fruition and are going to lead into some other stories. This is part of the multiverse saga, and it's, it's still a long way off. Having said that, we're going to get some more rules and visuals. Now, I'm 70% sure about this. I'm not 100% sure because they may have laid the groundwork for all this, and then they're really going to mess with your mind in this episode, so they don't give you more of those things. But I think there's still going to be some things here that you really got to pay attention to that are going to explain what's going on with the multiverse in a way that helps people move forward into these other movies. And I think in this most in this upcoming episode, it's going to happen in a way that is not as straightforward. So because it needs to mess with you in order to have a big payoff at the end to really wrap this thing up. So or it could be something you've already seen. Uh, that they're going back through. Um, there's some some trailer shots that, that definitely show those things happening, but I think they're only showing you the little bits. They're not showing you the bigger moments that are the conclusion or the consequence of what you have seen. So that's why I say this is not going to end well. Keep your bar low. Watch out for these multiverse clues. There's a whole lot going on here. I really think this episode is going to be great, and I'm going to go ahead and say it because there's, I think there's very little way they could drop the ball here and have a secret invasion final battle moment and just really, you know, jump the shark on this one and, and cause some problems. I think Loki season two, and, and I guess by extension because Moon Knight, as my favorite Marvel show, has not had a season two. Uh, I think Loki season two has firmly put this show as the number one MCU show, bar none, no conversation, no discussion, end of argument. Um, and then you can argue about second and third place between shows like WandaVision or Moon Knight, which I personally love. Um, I, I think there's a whole lot going on here and I think they're gonna wrap it up well um, because really any direction they go, as long as they kind of give you some story and leave it someplace, um, even if it's not satisfactory, because I don't think it can be, um, I think I'll be fine with that. I just, I just want to get a little more story and see what happens here. Um, curious what you guys think? Let us know in the comments below. Check out some of our other videos over here. We got a lot of things you can sink your teeth into, including a multiverse explanation. And as always, guys, when the next one drops, we'll catch you right back here. Later.